Hello everybody, this is Martha, Martha's Paper Crafting. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Thank you so much for always watching my uh, tutorials. It's been so much fun. It's really forced me to scrapbook and, and get these pages out uh, once a week. Um, so I wanna show you this week's uh, page that I put together. It coordinates with last week's page. Last week's page, we did this one right here with the pretty little circle plates and the little accordion uh, pop out. And uh, this week, I wanted to make something simple uh, for you uh, to do. And uh, so I came up with this. And of course, I needed to be a little bit more than just simple. So I made a mirror page with it. So we have a double page layout this week. Super fun to do. The basic page layout, you can see uh, if we break up the, the actual elements in here, you can see that this is one page behind and then we add a six inch strip in the middle. You have three spots for pictures underneath, and then you go from there, you, you can elaborate. I added the ruffle under here, under here, and then we added this gorgeous little gold trim to kind of blend in the two elements. We use the five by seven uh, picture frame die in here, and we also use the die for this one in here. We use tons of gorgeous little embellishments in between and all the gorgeous flowers and gold bows. Um, this exact same thing here, we added the date tag. So I like to kind of start my page layouts with a date tag on the top and then you kind of slowly move and with motion move around to the next spot. And as I say motion, I am seeing that I don't have any flourishes and oh my goodness, I don't have a single flourish. Might have to go reach in and, and stick a little flourish somewhere in, in here. Uh, so uh, this is how it's working out. On this side, we have a nice large tag so that you can write about your event and let your generation that's gonna be reading your scrapbooks know what is uh, going on in these pages. Uh, the five by seven is in the center and then you have smaller pages in the middle. Before I added all these lovely tags, there was a picture mat on each side. And then as I started building this, I felt like I wanted to turn these little uh, mats, these little pages, journal tags into actual mats, uh, little tags or pockets. And so that's also a fun way to kind of make your page interactive without making it too complicated. Uh, so it was mirror images and then you're adding these little elements in between. So let's get started with this and we'll and I'll tell you step by step how we put it together. It's a very simple way to do this. You have little gold edges, so you might want a little die that's a little gold edge. And then the five by seven edge is this one. And really uh, that's all we did. We used pinking shears to fussy cut around this little edge. And this is the China cabinet paper collection. So thank you so much and let's get going and show you step-by-step step how we put it together. Thanks. So here we have our basic layout starting. So when I start building a layout, I like to play with my paper and see what I can do with it. Look at your paper, not just for the actual art that is on there because I do think it's artwork. Um, look and see if there's anything that is a scene that does not work upside down. Uh, this little scene here uh, is landscape, so maybe you want to do it down, uh, but maybe I'll add something to it. These corners are my corners that I almost always add extra to. So that's why I like to start um, this. And let's spill this up and see how we use it. Okay, so we have this gorgeous pink with the plates. It's double-sided, so you know I love that. And we bring it around here. And then I got one page, I cut it in half, which is a 12 by 12, and I cut it into six by six. And that is this gorgeous little graph gold. And then on this side, it is these beautiful plates. And so what I'd like to do is kind of make a base, something to stand on for our pages. So I love that there. And then I got two pages from the green tint of the exact same paper, but the one in green. And the other side has this gorgeous wavy gold. And I'm not sure what I wanna do with this. I think I wanna do the wavy ruffle on it so we can kind of bring that back. And so I'm kind of thinking that it should be this little green base right here. I cut all of them up 
so that strategically I had two inches placed in between this little wave. And then I cut out the three quarter inch that was in between the two inch one. Okay, so we have that part here done. And I did two pages of it. I don't know if I'm gonna use it all, but maybe I will. Okay, so now we have the, the base for what I'm looking at. And then I would like to do see some uh, pictures on here. I'm trying to do this as basic, simple as I can, uh, that I like visually. So I took some of the uh, five by seven that come in the kit and kind of look through these to see which ones appeal to me the most. And I really like this blue uh, to repeat what we see in this background. And what we have here is we've got a double page layout going. And then this is a five by seven I cut in half. Again, these gorgeous plates. And I'm kind of tucking it into that little space, paying attention to where your most predominant uh, colors are on your plates, looking at the landscape. Uh, not that anybody's ever going to even look or see, you know, if that's something that doesn't bother you, then don't let me confuse you or make it more challenging for you. Um, so there's my little landscape of how I want it to be. This is our basic page. So let me show you. This was the three quarter. Let me make sure if I'm doing that correctly. It's a half inch that I saved from the um, trim here. And let me show you what I plan on doing with this. I love when they give us double-sided pages. I just love it. Um, and I want to showcase both pages. So just like we do the 12 inch uh, cutout and make a frame, I'd like to do that with this double-sided paper. So what I did is I went in here and I used a little cheat sheet. So I used the paper that we cut off and I placed that right there. And then I got the other paper and I placed it right there and I made with a pencil mark right here, a tiny little pencil mark so that I know how much to cut off. I am thinking I want to cut off, let's look, a half inch right here. So my markings are going to be on each corner at a half inch and I don't see it over here. So let's get one that is half inch and mark that. Okay, so that's how I made my little half inch mark. Just to double check and make sure that I was doing it the same for the other page. Okay, so just so you can kind of give yourself an angle in, uh, of what we're going to do. So on here, uh, I am going to put it at my half mark. Now your cutter might be different than mine, so pay attention to your cutter. And I have this marked at the half inch mark. All right, there, here. And then if I move it this way, right here, that is my half mark, okay? You want to make sure that you're you're as straight as you can be. Okay, then I come back around and I press down on my half mark, half mark. And I'm only using my little pencil marks as just a guide to see if I did it stop on the same spot, kind of a backup for my, my way. This is really challenging to do sometimes for me because there's so much design uh, print on the actual paper that you kind of uh, don't know when to stop or where your mark is. And so the little pencil mark kind of helps me to decide where to stop at. Okay, 
So now I can come back in here, erase my little pencil marks. Okay, so here we have our little square inside our square. So we want to decide what part of it do you want to see, what part of it do you not want to see. And I'm kind of thinking that because we have this little pink here, that I might want to leave the green on the inside. Now we're hoping that the green on the inside is going to be where your picture is inside. So maybe a little trim of that green will show up. And that's why I'm thinking these little dishes on the outside would be cute. You can kind of see the little teapot there and some of the little plates. So now let's do the same thing to this one. Again, we're going to take this. My little Martha Stewart thing here is dying on me. I don't know what I'm going to do when this little thing dies on me. Okay, so now we went all the way around. And we need to take the little pencil marks off. This is my, one of my absolutely favorite things to do to make a page layout. I love flipping over the paper. I love doing double-sided paper. And there, that goes just like that. Okay, so now we have the uh, tape on the back and we have these gorgeous little mats that are already doubled, but it's only a single piece of paper. So we have that there. What I'd like to do with this is I'd like to save some of this row of little plates here to use them as embellishments because we're gonna cover it up with this other one. I love the way this is looking right here. So this is a go. I'm gonna have a front and a back, two of those. I'm putting them aside. This one, front and back, feels a little weak. Let's add a little more tape. Okay, so now let's talk about the ruffles. We want ruffles on each side of our blue, of our little strips here that go in the middle. So we're gonna put our beautiful pink plates to the side and we're gonna work on this part. We want ruffles on the top and on the bottom of our base here. So the way I like to do this is I like to, okay, so we have two of them together, glued them, and I have been priming them by softening them up, up kind of like you do curly Q paper tape. Okay. Oh, one of my other favorite basic stuff is these zigzag scissors. And I'm laughing because I'm saying I'm gonna make this basic page and I keep adding more to it, but I'm sorry. I just, sometimes I just can't help myself. So I love how this little wave is going and I think our little wave should be in our ruffle. So we're gonna test it out and we're gonna cut, kind of doing a little fussy cutting around this ruffle, hoping that it's going to translate into the ruffle. Okay, so here we have the little ruffle that I am thinking of using right here, okay? And when I do this, I like to uh, try to make a pencil mark so that I know where I'm going to stop 
and um, it helps this little tape right here is right at the three quarters but I'm kind of thinking that I want this to be a little bit lower right here is where the green starts so let's mark where that is on this side okay you see that so I've written I've marked here where I want the gold to be showing and less of the green right there and then when I flip it over I marked it exactly where I want it to be so here is our mark and then so here we have I put more tape down because I thought I needed more and the way I like to do my my um, plan here for this is I like to put my paper here and I'm going to use this little edge and put it right here up against the pencil and that is how we're going to keep this going straight so that your ruffle is in somewhat of a form of straight. Now I am going to use two number two pencils, doesn't matter what number, but two of the same thing. So here I'm going to remove the um, double-sided tape okay and then here is this part and and here I have my pencil okay here and then I bring my second pencil in and mark my ruffle space. And then I'm taking my first pencil in to bring down the crease and hold my space, okay? So now I remove the second pencil and now it's back in its spot. continue you see how that that is once you do it a couple of times you will not feel as intimidated or afraid of messing up the paper there you go
Okay, so if you end up with a spot like I did, I'm playing with this and I'm not liking either way, so I'm just going to roll it down and flip it over. Just like that. And then I have this little fake gold one that I'm rolling over in it so that it has some body to it. That's my plan. Little gold. And we're gonna roll it around. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pinch it and fold it down. Pinch and fold it down. Pinch and fold fold it down. Pinch and fold it down. There we go. So there's my little ruffle. Do you see how that goes? Now we're gonna do that three more times. Look how pretty that is. Okay, now let's do the next spot. We're going to do two of them together, put them together. is just so pretty. I can just see that really being pretty. So now let's work on doing the next three. There we go. Here's our little two pieces of ruffles. Okay, now we remember how much we went in over here. We mark that and then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So when I marked this, I wanted all of the gold to be showing. I wanted minimal amount of the green to be showing. Okay, so here we have our mark. This is where we're gonna put our pencil, our next ruffle right there. Our tape. And I'm gonna get it right edge to edge, right there. And I'm staying really close to where we need to with the pencil mark. All right, sweet crafters. So what I have here is the first little ruffle pleat, fan fancy, fussy cutting. And now what I need to do is I need to kind of start it on the same side over here on this side. So I've marked with a pencil how deep I want to put the tape down or the ruffle down so that when I flip it over, it's, it's the spot that I want it to be at, okay? So that both ruffles are about the same height. And then I paid attention to how this ruffle is right here and I want it to start in the same direction. So I measured over on this side, approximately where it's gonna be at, and I curly cued this start until it matched this space. So now I've been priming my paper, kind of doing it like you do your curly uh, ribbons to make them all nice and curly and beautiful. And I'm going to slowly pull this up. I only take off a couple inches so that it gives me time to kind of play with this and I'm going to put this down like I did before holding it down with one pencil and then I put a spacer pencil that's pencil number two and then I'm coming down and I want that little spot here to end up on that pencil line and then I come back over I remove pencil number one and now that's using as a spacer and I'm going to roll over to the next spot. There we go. 
and you just continue the same thing. Now there are some beautiful um, embossing folders that help you do this without doing this little type of mechanism. And I love them, but for this, I kind of want it more of a soft look, if that makes any sense. So that's why I am doing the um, pencil style look. The other one is a little bit more of a sharp, the embossing folders. It's more of a sharp pleat, and I'm looking for something a little bit softer. So one pencil is basically pressing the tape and the paper together, and one pencil is your spacer. Once you put the paper where you want it at, then you remove the spacer and come back to where you want it to be at. You see what we end up with is very similar on both sides of the little pleats here we start in and then this one sticks out that's where I want it to end my little pleats here so I'm gonna cut this part and I'm gonna do a little roll if that makes any sense you kind of have to really manipulate your paper and make sure it sticks down. Okay, I want it to be up. So now we have the paper where we want it at, and now we wanna do the little pinch look to it. So for the pinch, I pinch up, and now this is folded towards me, so I pinch up and I fold down. So I'm pinching and I'm folding down. Now remember, this is so much easier to do when you have text paper, nice lightweight paper. This is this gorgeous cardstock paper, so it can be done. It's just a little bit more tedious to do, but I prefer text weight paper for doing my ruffles and this type of a mechanism because then you're not fighting yourself. And the reason why I'm kind of making it a pleat and flatten it is because I'd like the paper to be this page. Remember, I was trying to make this page my simple page. So if it's a simple page, I would like it to be flatter than fatter. So that's what I'm thinking here. Okay, now you see that we still have that look, but we have a little bit flatter space. So now let's do that two more times. So here's our ruffle. So now we have this that is a six by 12. These are two inches and I fancy curved around it with the pinking shears. So it was like this before, okay? And then we used the little pinching method coming down. So I tried to make sure that the curve here was the same as this side. And so now what you can see is that here's the split of the curve and these are the ends, okay? So now I would like to put that on top of this page, like so with the little plate sticking out but I'm really upset that these middle strips are not gonna be showing. And I'm going to cut them off. 
So we're going to cut the top and the bottom plates. You have to aim really good so that you're not cutting the plate that you're trying to save. So what I'm doing is practicing with my straight edge cutter, making sure that before I pierce the paper, that little blade is not cutting into anything. It's about four and a quarter where I am cutting this little piece off. So here we go. You see how that just cuts right there? Then we're gonna do the same thing to the next piece. And now we have two ends. And then my favorite craft paper, and it's a 12 by 12 piece of paper, but what I did is I cut a little piece of it off so that I can frame it and not see that piece. Do you see that? So now we're going to glue that on top. And I don't have <laughs> my tape runner because it's in a different project. And you can feel where this is the edge and this is the part that I cut. Or at least that's what I think. Let's look. <clears throat> Here's the bottom. And I'm going to attach this to the paper that I have extra of just like that. Do you see that? So now we have little bits sticking out and now the top one goes right here. On this. And what I like to do, because nobody's ever going to see it, is I'm going to add a little bit of ugly tape to this inside to keep my paper intact right there. And then this is the part that's going to sit on top of my cute little papers. Are those not so cute? All right, so we still want this little part to be flattened a little bit. In, I'm going to do three inches from this and then my second page I'm going to need three inches also so we'll use that. Now our form is going to be sitting just like that and that gives us a little bit more cush here for this. I'm going to put it down right here. And we're bringing this in and I'm thinking this is the outside I want this ruffle to be on the inside there is the start of a wonderful base page of things to start here so we're gonna do that again now we want to press down here, the mat that we used earlier remember how we did a quarter inch around each mat I used uh, I taped it back up together to make it one paper and it's a five by seven and I very carefully ran it through this die be careful one at a time because it's just barely fits into the five by seven that they came let me show you by sevens that come with it and you can see that it just barely fits the little scallops so uh, if you cut it a little crooked, you'll have to add extra embellishments to cover up the boo-boo. So, so I'd like to kind of warn you of those kind of things in case you are going too fast with your dye machine. And then I, again, very carefully uh, ran these through here also because I love the way that little embossing edge works with this. So I just wanted those six little uh, plates to show so I ran them through there. These are the dies that we used from the scrap crop uh, event. So now we have those and I have my page that I have been putting underneath. 
Okay, so we are doing the double page. We are doing the double page here, so I have to pay attention to how this sits, which, so here it meets together, so therefore that is the middle, and I have a um, landscape on this dish that you can't even see anymore, but that's the bottom, and that is how we want to build this. So I'm going to put this over here, and we're going to build this right on top. And then two of these, very sneaky, kind of just barely sneak underneath here. Like that. Okay. So let's put these in and you see how pretty that is? It's just, it just, it's a double page. It's exactly the same. Uh, what we're doing is this part is the middle and we're going to put some kind of gorgeous embellishment on each corner so that you can kind of uh, move through the layout together. Okay. On this one, I feel like I want to use a little chipboard on the back of it. And I still have the chipboard that we use for the other two strips. And so I'm going to cut this chipboard a little tiny bit smaller. So I'm gonna back that piece up. So now I can put this and glue this to the back of this to kind of help it give it a little bit more support. It gets, this paper gets really wavy after you have used it with uh, the die cutting machine. You wanna make sure that when you do this and put your chipboard in, that you are not uh, covering up any of the beautiful scallop that's on this. So here is how our page is starting to flow. You've got gorgeous plates and we have these gorgeous embellishments and we still have some of these beautiful plates that we can use here. And that's kind of what I'm looking at of how I'm going to add uh, our embellishments to this. It's very little of what we want to add. Now we want a spot for our title, uh, where we're gonna put what we were doing this day uh, so I'm kind of looking at where we're going to add that. Let's think about that. Okay, I'm putting together my page layout. And as I am working with it, I start to feel like I need more space for journaling because we always need journaling. And I want to frame it up a little bit and put it maybe behind here because I like to work from the top page down across. Um, kind of maybe from elementary school or something I don't know you put the, your date and uh, and then you move down and you sign your signature here so uh, or, or letter whatever I don't know why I have these issues but regardless so I ran this cute little green uh, tag it's one of the inserts uh, from our five by seven scrapbooking dies and then I'm backing it with this gorgeous gold that I am literally obsessed with and kind of centering it, just a little eyeballing, because you know there's gonna be flowers and whatnot around it. So eventually, we'll be able to see it. And I kind of really wanna see some more of that trim around here, uh, embossing around here. So I'm gonna get, which I do very seldom do I use ink, but I'm feeling like I need to really accent that pretty embossing that we worked for that embossing. We should be able to see it. You know, we want to get credit for the little extras that we do. So, just a little bit, kind of gives it a little vintage look. love this little brush kind of it's just a little soft inking you don't want to ink too much and this extra little uh, inking on here really gives it what I was looking for okay 
okay? And I am thinking that this, I want to sit right in that little area. Yes, I'm covering up a plate, but I have some extra plates I can put in that little space. There is where I'm thinking of putting that at. And this is the one that we used for that. And because now we have introduced gold to this, I'm going to use this gorgeous one as a gold tag down here at the bottom. And I think I wanna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna run this one and use it for the date. I'm gonna put this right inside the green and inside the gold, excuse me. We're gonna put that right inside the, go the gold. And then I like to use Plano office tape to keep it all nice and taut. Okay, so we're gonna add the gold down here. We're adding a big journaling tag. Do we wanna do that differently? Do we wanna put the date on this side? And then the big journaling tag at the bottom. Maybe because that looks a little bit lighter. We might even put it on the bottom. Keep the light, the top light. So here's what my process is. This is what I'm doing when I'm working together on a page. I just like to kind of look and see how things are going. I love the gold accents. You can see the gold on the page, but I feel like I need a tiny more strip of gold. And you know what's gonna happen is we're going to put a little gorgeous gold strip through here. So let's get our gold out and see what we put together for that. What I call the joining pieces. Just like that. Oh, that is so beautiful. These are those gorgeous German something. I can't remember what they're called. And then we're gonna do the other one. And because this is a half, we're gonna do the half also on the outside. And we cut off two pieces and we should end up right in the same piece. It's like gold foiling your scrapbook. Oh my God, is that, that just takes this whole page up the notch that it needed. So now when we do this piece, you can still see the little gold in between there and it makes it pop from throughout. So, okay, now that was one strip like this was able to do a 12 inch because the center binding or the piece that I'm gluing together is under the picture. You can't even see that it's not a 12 inch strip. So now what we need is three more of these strips to add to here and then to the next pieces. So let's get that part taken care of. Okay, here is our double page. So we have a five by seven in the middle. We have two smaller ones on the side. We have a big piece for journaling right here in the middle. We have this gorgeous German uh, trim that we have here. And then we have the scalloping and the ruffle underneath it, really making a huge impact on the gold families. So uh, now we need to lay these down Okay, so I'm inspired by all this lovely china to play with a little doily lacy thing. And I kind of added a little uh, lace to my edge here. So what I'm doing is I'm sandwiching the little lace to my journaling tag, and then I wanna add it about right around here somewhere. Uh, you can easily do this also when you run it through a um, doily type of dye uh, without using actually fabric. But I had the fabric, one of my sweet friends uh, gave me some at a crop uh, last time. Uh, and so I wanted to put that uh, through here. And uh, now what I'm doing is I 
am sandwiching the fabric and with the double-sided tape and a little chipboard piece that I'm going to put right on here so that we can kind of keep it all together. So I'm going to attach this to this area and I don't want it to have any glue so that it could actually fit as a pocket. I think it needs a little bit more height to with this little pleating here. I'm going to add a little chipboard. Okay, so I added two pieces of chipboard to the back of this and I'm liking the way that is sitting. And then I'm gonna uh, use some heavy duty double-sided tape to keep this really tight. Make sure that it does not move. Okay, so when these fold into the little page protector, that's going to be the part that's kind of frilly and pretty. And I think I like the way that is looking. So now we have our double-sided pages. Now I also, this could be the title page to your book from last week. Or you could have just one like this. And this could be the next page. Um, if you're doing something like this. So now you see, I like to go back and look at what I worked with last time so I get inspired to decorate and start embellishing the next two pages. So let's get the embellishments out and start putting down our tea set, setting our table so that we can uh, do that for this page, okay? Okay, so I'm putting together my little um, bouquets, I like to call them little bouquets of loveliness, okay? So we have here this little cluster. I like to group things together uh, as we are starting to do this. So I have here at the bottom the little doily, the actual fabric doily. And I love to start kind of getting your groove on with a, a little tag. So I like to make a little tag. Maybe you add a picture to the back. Uh, so I added one of these little pots and then I broke apart the little, what do we call the double-sided pop-up uh, glue in here. And then I used it as a negative. So, and then this little butterfly is from the doily. So this big tag here, that is where we're gonna add our memories, becomes a tag, a pocket. And then I added here the pot and a little tea uh, cup and some little teacups here and I like to kind of cluster them together uh, so that they're in the spot together so then when we go and look at the second uh, layout let me make sure we can see that all together okay so when we start looking at them uh, together I like to put the cluster of everything kind of falling going across the page in some kind of motion or movement for the page. So uh, I reinforced the little tag, uh, excuse me, I reinforced the same thing. I added another doily to the date uh, tag and I added a little bit of doily material to it. I cut around the doily material. I know I'm cutting somebody's uh, grandma's vintage doilies that my lovely friend uh, gave to me but I think uh, I am letting it live in another way and upcycling it. So I'm okay with it. And now I put a little doily there and I'm thinking that I want like a little cup here in a corner and I'm wanting to put another bow in here but with maybe some flowers around it. So I'm kind of putting that together. I like the way that looks but I wanna add some flowers, add a little difference in color from the gold here to the gold here and another little gold bow. And then I'm liking this big, huge platter as the bottom. Um, I also love these big circles. So if I add a big circle, then can I add a doily around the circle 
like so. You see that? Add a little bit of doily material to it. Add a little bow. Uh, on the little platter here, we have another little cup. And then we need to add some uh, flowers. So I wanted to show you how I kind of put that together, that whole look together. Um, I kind of like this little gold platter here. I'm looking at this and what I do is I want it to be continuous in each corner. I like to work in ways uh, in threes. And so I see here this little corner with gold. I want a little corner here with gold. I want a little corner here with gold. And then I'm gonna sprinkle everything with a little bit of beautiful flowers all the way around it. So let's build this one little doily here. Um, and I'm thinking I want to use the hot glue. And I think that this doily is also a sticker. Isn't that convenient? And so, Now what we will do on this side is add some double-sided tape. Okay. Now here is our little uh, platter. It's how we're working it here. And I'm thinking I'd like this to be maybe like so. And then this can be another pocket because the pocket could be behind this big plate. Oh, I'm not showing you. So if I put this here like that, and then we're adding this part to it. And then we can add, we can have this plate here be a pocket. Okay. And we're adding this little thing of loveliness here. And we can always add a little bow and add flowers around it. And I think that would be just perfect. Okay. So when I'm looking at this here, I am thinking that this little part here is going to be outside. So I am looking at this. So what I will do is I will only cut or take off half of the sticker material on the back because I want it to be a pocket. So I remove the bottom portion, put some heavy duty glue in here. And I'm gonna leave the sticker part on so that it still is able to be a pocket. It's not gonna have stickiness on it. When you want your paper to behave the way you want it to behave, sometimes only a little hot glue will make it do what you want it to do. And I'm gonna add a little glue into this so that it stays nice and tight in here. Okay, so now we have these together. And I really love this idea of this little cup up here, right there. And I wanna put little flowers on it. Okay, so here we have our final page. This page came out so cute. It, I think it looks wonderful with the page that we did last week uh, that we did with the little circles. I think that this little page here would be just such a cute little title page. And then we can put these pictures in here. 
uh, and make a whole album of it. So just quickly, let's review what we, we have here is the uh, five by seven mat on each side, the smaller mats in the middle. And then this little area here, when we did our cluster, we ended up having a little area here for a pocket uh, by not removing the all the sticky stuff from the back. So that came out really cute. So you kind of use that as an area where you can add uh, little love notes to somebody or um, use it to add more pictures. Here you have a date tag. So I always believe in putting the dates down of when it actually happened. And then here you can write your little story uh, of what you want to say for the next generation to read about your event. Uh, and then on this side, it's kind of like a, a mirror copy of one each of each other. Uh, the papers are all the same, but you kind of make it individualized by your accessories. So I think I'm pretty much all out of all of my accessories. I think I used them all up with this. So that's fun because I love to use these all up. And then on these tags, um, these are a little ephemera that came with uh, the other kit and a little cute little butterfly that was from the doily. Uh, my lovely friend uh, Peggy uh, gave me a doily at one of the last crops that we went to. So I was really excited to be able to incorporate this. Uh, thank you, Peggy. And uh, I'm hoping that you're enjoying yourself watching my videos. I hope that you guys uh, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe. Me. I am putting together some prizes uh, for the 500 subscriber mark. So I'm really excited about that. And we are getting ready to put together uh, some kind of organizing ideas for the Create 7. So let's look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Uh, send me some ideas for next week's uh, project and I will see you then. Have a great day. Bye.